It's a rusted root. Long time listen. Long time fan. Never Sunday shout appearance. Mainly because you're taking a very stylized vocal and a very stylized guitar and a multiple piece band. So many pieces. And trying to knock it down into two people, which is difficult with most songs. I would say almost impossible with this song, but I feel like, um, you know, and this is something that we haven't really gone into depth or talked about a lot, but I feel like that one of the unique things about the Sunday shout out or what we're trying to do is take songs and investigate them almost like an abandoned house. Like you go in searching the cobwebs and searching the closets for maybe feelings and emotions that you didn't know were there, didn't feel the first time or revisit, you know, and you're kind of exploring like what mm-hmm. the song can be, you know, mm-hmm. and Especially within the context of what we're doing in acoustic. Right. The beauty of certain songs, like last week, even though uh, we did the Cindy Lauper song and it was very synthesizer and full band in the 80s, it translates very well to an acoustic ballad type Mm -hmm. of thing. And it works Mm -hmm. really well, you know, and you get different emotions out of it. A song like this week, where the major feeling to me is just overwhelming joy and happiness and... Like I said, it's very stylized and exuberant. And how do you, you know, you you can't chase that. You're not going to get the exuberance in a two-piece performance that you would out of a nine-person performance with drums and bongos and all that stuff. So it's interesting to explore it and try it out, you know. And um, even though I think that in some ways it's, you know, it's let's just say it's a lot different than the original, sure, but yeah. also still some of those same feelings of happiness. It's a, it's a song that I think maybe the mark of a great song is that when it is stripped down, you can still feel some of those emotions, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, it was fun. It was fun to try to pull off a, a challenge like that. I know? felt it was akin to when we did uh yellow lead better. Mm. <laughs> because listening to that song you mean like stylized vocal lines. vocally yeah. lyrically yeah because it's so uh garbled like really hard to understand <laughs> yeah. the 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 lyrics like you catch one every now and more again more emotion than word but get this both of them had misunderstandings about a whale really yeah 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 that's right <laughs> Right, because in the, the misunderstood lyric, if I remember right, in Yellow Ledbetter is on a wizard on a whale. Yeah, on a wizard on a whale. And this one, if I remember correctly, is Simeon the Whale. thought the song was actually called Simeon the Whale yeah. back in the Simeon time the Whale. It came out. You can just look up the lyrics readily on the internet. But it is the title of the song, is Send Me on the Way. Send, Send Me, me on, on My way. way. But if you hear it on the radio and they don't announce it, I, I can yeah, see Exactly. The, then Simeon the Whale, it is. I could see Simeon the Whale. Yeah. So, so I don't know. Maybe we need to write a stylized song about a whale, <laughs> right? <laughs> a wizard, Simi and the whale. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. But, um, I've been watching. You know, and I think one of the reasons we got to doing the song was I've been watching some uh, of the lead singer in his new band, and they still perform the song. Do you different. pronounce his name Gablicky? Gul. G- Glabicki, I think. Glabicki. Yeah. Glabicki. Yeah. yeah, Michael. Michael Glabicki. Yeah. And l- <laughs> listening and watching, he's uh, he's an interesting chap. Yeah, well, I would have said, you know, if if, I, if you would have said, hey, you know, back in the 90s, one of these guys came out, if you would have said, hey, where does this band originate from? I would have been like Ecuador, Cuba, Brazil, I would South class, America. I would class somewhere. their sound as <laughs> you know, very world Southern, music. Yeah. Southern California. <laughs> you know, maybe if they were moving to the States, you know, um, of course, like Jamaica or something, because all of their, they're all very much rooted in hand percussion, you know, right. and this driving sound of the hand percussion, it's almost, so, like, almost like a South drum African circle or it's, African influence. It's very like a, like a drum circle, but with, um, structure and, uh, Lyrical content. No, but wait, hold up. They're from 
Do you know? Pittsburgh. Pit. Pit. <laughs> Just goes to show the beauty of music and how it can influence mm-hmm. people worldwide. You know, the um, definitely he must have been influenced by world music, you know, and of course, uh, uh, hippie culture as well, you know. Well, I mean, it's like <laughs> Krungbin. Yeah. I mean, their name means airplane and tie, and they are very world music sounding also, mm-hmm. and they're in Texas. Texas. Yeah. So, no, it's great that um, people feel their influences so much and can be such a, um, like, what do you say, transit, not transit, but a... Uh, conduit. Yeah, conduit. Yeah. yeah like, no, I got where you're going. That's not the exact word, maybe. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes. yeah. Like, anyway, yeah, yeah conduit, conduit for, like, the feelings and the emotions of the music that influences them, you know, because as we've been talking the past couple of days, you know... The output of our music is the sum of all of our influences and what we've listened to through all the years and how we feel things and process things as a human, you know, and we've been exploring or looking at AI music, you know, yeah, and actually, so that'll blow your mind yesterday I was bit. kind of depressed Holy listening cow. to it because it can sound a certain kind of way that is actually, you wouldn't know if it was human well, or, not just that. Okay. And computer. again, okay, like let's, we, we're going back to this objective, subjective subject of art and music. And things can be uh, enjoyable without being good or bad. Mm-hmm. Okay. So listening to some of these AI original works, I don't know how else to put it. Uh, some of them are really enjoyable yeah. to listen to. Some of them are crazy and hilarious. Like they they haven't got the the things just right yet. But some of them are scary complicated, mu- like musically and lyrically and they they have double entendres and they've got um really kind of deep lyrical content and it's a little alarming well and they're studying like hundreds of years of human music absolutely and so here's what so are we here's that yeah and so are we but here is where i had hoped this morning you know i guess and that is like listening to a band like rusted root trying to perform their music you know and i'm thinking like okay there at some points it's almost like when you talk about um evolution not to do a hotbed subject but like they i'm talking more of like a concept that they use in evolution where like making the leap you know how yeah. they talk about going from yeah like a, one, they, the idea of like going from a fish to a full walking human you right know, so making the leap there's like genre leaps that happen right because right. like in the 50s if you would have t- if we would have had ai in the 50s and we would have said hey make music it would have sounded Nothing like some of the music that came after Today, that, like the Beatles yeah. and Jimi Hendrix right. and Led Zeppelin. You know, they were derivative works for sure right. of influence, but because of the technology and innovations and playing and all these things, they they were unpredictable. You know, well, I, I go think that, I go back to that the thing that you found that said, you know what, let AI is amazing. It's wonderful and. Uh, it, it helps inspire, I would say, but let it do my dishes and let it clean my house. Let me do my art. Right. Like it's, it's taking over the fun bits. It is. It's taking over the heart bits. And, and I don't know, you know, maybe in 10 years we'll look back and laugh at AI as like a forgotten advancement for music. Like much like we do like a mini disc or something, you right. know, whereas like, ha ha. We thought that that was going to be like a threat or we thought it was this, but I at don't the same think so. time, yeah. I think that, um, you know, the one thing like though that I, like, that does give me hope is that thinking of it critically and we've thought about it quite a bit the past yeah. couple of days because yeah. it's a challenge to what we're doing, right? Because aside from live music, like re- making new music, hey, I can pump out a million songs in an hour, you know, literally we'd be lucky to write a half of a chorus maybe. But the um, it's a labor. Yeah. yeah. So and of course we're gonna put care and thought and all our own human emotions into it. But there's one thing that does give me a little bit of solace, and that I, I think about is that um, AI, no matter what, 
no matter what you feed it, it's going to be predictable to some extent. Like, it may seem like it's pulling things out of the sky because we don't understand how it computes, but it is predictable. It is an, a, a logarithm, you know? It is... Algorithm. Algorithm, yeah. right. It is an algorithm. It is based on all the works that it listens to right. and, and what it's pulling from. It so is, it's influences. It's influences, like much like a human would have influences. But the one thing that it can never have, I don't think, you know, is the unpredictable creativity that a human would have. You know, meaning like that genre leaping type of thing, you know, like I don't they know. can't. If you gave it at this point, if you gave it the prompt, be unpredictable. <laughs> But it's still going to be predictable within its limits. Yeah, and I no, think I that understand it's what gonna you're be, saying. Yeah. You know, there's going to be musical innovations in the way that we play instruments and the instruments themselves that may change music in an unpredictable way. So I think that, I mean, like on thinking, and I haven't made up my mind completely. I haven't arrived at how I wish to feel about AI. But I do believe that whatever beauty that AI puts into the world, it really is how we use it. So if we use this, these art forms, both visual art and, and now sonic art, that are coming out of human prompting, if we use that as inspiration for more art, I don't think it's bad. But I think it's going to boil down to... Are we going to be purists? Are we going to be co-writers with an artificial intelligence? Are we, what do we want to take and bring from it? So we have to choose where we want to land with what we wish to consume, with what we wish to create. And what worries me is like, you know, because the downfall of everything tends to be nowadays corporate greed right uh, <laughs> because yeah so the thing that worries me is that the companies that come up with this stuff and this tech that to me the right thing is is if you type in a prompt that says i want to hear a new song about peanut butter and banana sandwiches yeah by elvis it's going to be a great song and yeah. yeah if you type that in and you know you say in the style of elvis presley mm-hmm isn't there money due to the Elvis Foundation and the state? Because, like the likeness, using the likeness. Because you're using, you're using all the, and not granted, I mean, I guess in some ways, you know, he didn't own, you know, he didn't have to pay his predecessors. But this is a little different because you are you're putting a name to it you know you're yes. saying in this fashion yes you know in this fashion or you're using like maybe frank sinatra's voice on a song i'll say know? we're at we're at this crossroads legally where i think artists by and large artists we're not really we're we're a reclusive bunch by and large yeah and we don't generally uh band together on things unless there's something really pushing us so i think it's one of these things legally we need to keep a close eye on it and make sure that the rug the creative rug that we stand on doesn't get ripped out from under us collectively and we're our art is questioned forever and ever right i mean in theory like in the wrong hands Oh, let's not even go there. I mean, it's already in the wrong hands, probably. But like, in, <laughs> oh, but in theory, like, I mean, if there's not protections taken, then say a really popular band. You getting ready to step in some quicksand, well, like, sir? Say, what's like a really popular <laughs> band that's out there right now? Like, um, you know, just say like I don't know, Beyonce or and, well, let's Coldplay let's let's run with Dolly Parton because Dolly, Dolly Parton, Parton is okay. the sweetheart of America. Okay, like, so she's... what if like they release a new album? She's already announced her retirement, so yeah. that's why I say her because okay. she is retiring. So say somebody, well, I'm saying somebody releases a brand new album, mm -hmm. and to ride on that coattails, AI releases a brand new album in the style of Dolly Parton. Yep. 
there's nothing saying that some of those songs might not be as catchy or catchier than the actual Dolly Parton album. People are going to be are confused enjoyable. Yeah. as to who is who. Yeah. And theoretically, the person that it is the, mimicking mimicking could capitalize and make more money because there's no investment right. anymore of right. like instruments, musicians. There's no buy. There's no. There's no recouping costs or very little compared to what a, a musician. Maybe has. that's what the Spotify CEO so, was talking about. So, I'm saying that like you could, in theory, you could see corporate entities make millions off of people's names and likenesses in a way that we've never seen before. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's. And in what and in that case, what's the difference of them using like a Frank Sinatra voice and selling a Frank Sinatra song or something well, you've never done? And that hold on a second, because you can take it a step further because AI is doing video now. So like you could have a music video of long dead people, mm-hmm. like Elvis mm-hmm. doing a new Elvis album, and mm-hmm. you have the whole thing on video that AI just conjured up. Would it be interesting? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it would be. And people that were huge Elvis fans probably enjoy it and would like to see it, like, because it's a fantasy of what if he was still around. Right. But where does the money go? And where does the attribution go? And who is that's really where we responsible? Have to, that's it, where we have to step it carefully. It kind of machine... The machine's not at fault because somebody no, programmed it. Exactly, <laughs> you know? and it's software. That's the thing. So. And here's the other thing, too. Like, in looking into the AI, it is growing because everybody wants to be the first one to get there. Because if you're the first one to get there, then that is where you get the money. Mm-hmm. So the people who are developing the software, of course, they're racing. They're all mm-hmm. racing to be the one that has the first musical software, that has the first the art generator. Because right now, there's no answers. There's Nobody no, knows. it's moving too quickly. And our, at least in America, like our law, I mean, we're, we've ground to a halt, let's face it. There's nothing. They're kind of looking at it going, yeah, the that's laws happening. Aren't keep up with society. And if we expect <laughs> the laws to save us, I think we're a little blind because. Part of the reason musicians are in the mess that they're in is because the laws couldn't keep up with digital downloads yes. the first time around. Yes, digital and then here we are. And streaming services, they couldn't keep up with it to begin with. So, you know, a problem that might be 10 times more complicated than digital downloads because we were talking at that time about just possession of a file and right. whether it was right or wrong and sharing right. it and all this type of thing and philosophical art. Now we're talking about like the next level. Like you yeah. know, we're talking about theori- Creation. theoretical art yeah. of a philosophical and you then know, who owns idea. That? Here's the other thing. Okay, so say you use an AI generator. You're using like the music one that we were looking at, the mm-hmm. Udio. So you're in there and you create a song in concert with this mm-hmm. AI, right? So you with your prompting and your idea along with their AI generator, have created a work, Mm -hmm. right? Are they then co-writer? Does UDO get co-writing credit? Well, and... What happens then? What if you want to get it synced? And one of the real scary parts of all this, you know, I mean, we've already talked, I've already said really scary parts, like, several times, but another thing that hits my mind is that the art that's being made, you know, it... It can be without flaw because it's a computer generated right. art. And the, sometimes I've always thought that the beauty in the art, a lot of times, is the flaw. The I've organic talked about nature in the past, of it. The yeah. organic nature of it. And that I think that. The almost missed beat. Right. The, the, the slight, a couple of cents extra we, off we, the note. Ba- as bands or musicians sound like the way they do because of limitations. You know, you can say. You know, that it's a flaw, but it's actually the, what makes art sound the way that it is. Well, it's like, like, look at Joni Mitchell. She created chords because she, she didn't know right? what chords. She didn't know how you to know, play she the just, guitar right away or whatever. She made you know? up the sound and that she wanted to say. About with. all people like that, maybe they only knew so many chords, so they wrote yeah. certain songs. Or they could only play the drums a certain way, or they were missing fingers. Made it literally, interesting, Literally, like yeah. Jerry Garcia yeah. missing a yeah. finger. So he played a banjo a certain kind of way. He played mm-hmm. rolls a certain kind of way. 
you know, and like physical limitations. And then even like you take the human voice, the human voice can only sound so many kind of ways, right? Like you can make your, you can manipulate your voice. Like you can Mm -hmm. sing in tune, you can manipulate your voice. Yeah. But you can't sound like a totally different human. Exactly. Or if you, you can, have your own tone. even the people that can mimic other humans can do a, a finite amount, exactly. right? Because like they can't extend their pitch endlessly well, or go do down endlessly. Well, it has to do with endlessly. like your physicality, your bro- right. bone structure, the bone structure, your and all this stuff. larynx. And you might like, be able to sound similar in certain kind of ways, but it's limiting because mm-hmm. of you know it's a mm-hmm. natural limit. You know, like. My muscles and bones are built a certain way. I can only play so fast. You know, right. I've only played so long. I've only practiced so hard. My point being is that... And your ear plays into everything, too. Right. So, My yeah. point being is that AI doesn't have that limitation. Yes. You know? So AI it can, be can pretty much do anything. It can be perfection. And not that that in itself in like is scary, seconds. but <laughs> like the fact that we've given up art and music in so many different ways. Like oh, the yeah. fact that... Are it, like we criticize musicians in a yeah. kind of way that like it's all about competition, how fast you can play. It's not about expression. It's about or how you you're know, dressed or the execution mm-hmm. of it, you know, and we've trained the listener through things like beat detection and quantize it, quant, 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 Quantization. Quantization. <laughs> I'm just going to go past that word. Putting it but, on the grid. Putting it on the grid where it's like <laughs> beat quant- quantized. And it's like everything's like right on a certain beat is in, yeah. and it's firm and Perfection. rigid, you know. Yeah. And we've trained the listener that if the note inflects too much, then that's out of tune. Yes. You know? So we've had things like auto tune and even live and you yeah. know, even people wow. like Taylor Swift and Michael Buble are using auto tune live because they've been taught and told so many times that, you know, perf- Perfect performance, perfect yes. performance, yeah. you know, and the day and age of the Internet maybe hasn't helped that because people are afraid to have a note that's just out a little there, bit off yeah. out there because maybe they'll be made fun of or it'll show up everywhere. But, you know, the, the, the thing is, is that you take artists from our past like Neil Young, Bob Dylan, Tom Petty, you know, some of these artists that would slide into notes mm-hmm. all the time, you know. Mm-hmm. Now you put them on auto tune and the notes are faster and they get there quicker and like yeah. the motion is changed from the original tent intent and I don't think you can. My point is like you know and it's I like guess removing... Rick Beato said it the best like you know if you're trying we've been making people sound like a computer mm-hmm. well a computer can sound like a computer easier than a human faster, can sound like a computer yeah, for sure you know yeah, so we, right. we're all trying to sound perfect all the time yeah that's not like, the beauty of humans I feel like humans it's are removing, imperfect it's like removing colors from a visual palette you're still going to get the picture but it's going to be different it's going to yeah. be just different and again i haven't landed on good bad in between how i feel about it so uh I don't know. Talk about the one shot. Yeah, if we stuck with us this long, if you stuck with us this long, one thing we wanted to say is that we we got these little toys because we wanted to add some percussion to this week's shout out. But that's like, an instrument, um, sir. But they were off of. Uh, <laughs> yes, they were they were off screen. So maybe you know, mm. if you were wondering how the percussion mm. was happening, mm-hmm. then this is like called a finger one shot, and Ashley was playing that. I was playing this. So it's got like a little elastic here that you just put over your fingers. One finger, two finger, whatever. And, and it's a little mini shaker. But it's one. It only does going one way. So if you do a shaker, it's... And this is just the one. So you're not getting the so much Back rattling. Emotion. So it's a little more... Yeah. A little precise. more docile yeah. and precise for a uh, so a part of part of the reason that I use this one whenever we're doing shout outs is we have tried doing shakers and I play shaker at a live show. It can be a little overwhelming. My microphone that we use here in our studio for the shout out, it picks up things really well. Like it the it gets bleed off from the guitar and everything in the room. So the shaker, if I were to play a tambourine, it's overwhelming in the microphone it takes over all the sound that we're trying to create so this is nice we've actually done a shaker in a towel before we've tried all kinds of things trying to get it right on my side 
on my here on my foot. I got the foot tambourine, <laughs> which is basically a rubber band, and it, it was hard to control on a barefoot today, but on a shoe, it's a little more precise. Mm -hmm. And you can tell it's kind of a similar thing where it's like a mini tambourine instead of having, uh, I forget what these calls are, things are officially called jangles. We're going to call them jangles. Or jingles. Jangle. I don't know. They're little, but anyway, this little has metal four discs. sets. Like where a tambourine would be a whole big round one. This is a little more subdued, but also, like Ash was saying, more precise because it has stops in it. So it gives you a, it's not a jangly, jangly, yeah, ringy, ringy thing. Yeah, it doesn't ring out. So. so we're just having fun trying to find ways to propel the music this week yeah. because it was so drum driven. Yep. And, uh, and we even know, toyed around with... Adapting the guitar with, part, adapting the vocal yeah. parts to try to make it fit a two-person setting. We toyed around with perhaps pulling out the looper and maybe looping in a couple of bongos and things in there. But um, it's really like this is more true to what you get from us in a live show. And that's really what we're here trying to give you with the shout out is uh, songs that we enjoy, that we hope you enjoy with our... Our voicing to them and our and, interpretation yeah. and our imperfections. Yeah, because I'm not a drummer. We and, and we also we I'm, don't we are we're not the artists that are gonna gravitate toward using things like quantizing or or auto tune and Never whatnot. Used auto -tune. We, we like our music to have an organic feel, and that means having imperfections. And do we get hit for it sometimes? You know, we're we're not trying to put something that's bad out into the world something that bothers the ear no. but we do want you to have an authentic human performance and, so i guess and that's, a different performance than yeah. the original because if you want to listen to the original go listen to it we're we not encourage you to listen to the original i never felt like i'm competing with the original never I'm never like that's never a thing i'm not trying our goal we're not a cover band no. per se so it's not no. like we're trying i mean in most ways we're not a cover band but when we do a cover we're just trying to, like I said in the beginning of this video, we're trying to examine the rooms and the closets yeah. of the song and trying to understand and maybe bring out something that was, if it was in the original, maybe it wasn't as highlighted, you know? Maybe repaint a wall or yeah. two in that abandoned house. Or maybe, house, yeah. you know, maybe it brings out a little different emotion because of the spin we put on it. Right. And then we're just moving on. We're not trying to compete with... You know, certain songs. We had a comment the other day that on um, um, that said, "This guitar playing isn't anything like the record. Maybe try a little harder." And I what? was like, "I was like, e uh, no, I tried that, hard to make it not, not like the record. Not like the record. Thank so, you very much. Thank yeah. you very much." Yeah. So <laughs> and that, it kind of so the, the criticism it kinda became like compliment. compliment. It's still kind of. Yeah. It's still kind of. It's interesting that people feel the need to come on and give that type of comment, like a, even if they feel like it's constructive. I, think I assume, find it interesting that people think that we're even attempting the original. Well, in this day and age, I think it is that, um, you know, there's a lot of that. Like, we've been trained by computers to sound like computers, and like the mark of perfection is to sound like the original. But, you know, if you go back to the 60s and 70s, everybody was playing each other's songs and they all through their limitations interpreted stuff. Like when right. the Stones were doing the songs that were blues songs, you know, or R&B songs, they sounded like the Stones. They didn't sound like anybody else, you know, and, and that's been lost yeah. a lot, I think, in yeah. music nowadays. You know, you listen to a cover and a lot of times that is the goal is to sound just like the record. You yeah. Know? And just to yeah. be clear, that's not our goal. That's not our goal at all. <laughs> and you can love it or you can hate it. If you don't so, like it, that's fine. Like so we if have, you want to if you want somebody that sounds just like the record, then go listen to the record. Yeah. yeah go no. listen to the record or find somebody else that does that. But that's just not, us. like I said, yeah. I, we encourage you to go listen to the original and like see the differences because there's a reason why we're performing the song and it's because we enjoyed the original. Yes. We like the original yes. and we want to feel like what it's like to play with it. It's like mm -hmm. borrowing somebody's toy. Yeah. Like we want, we want to play, for sure. we want to play with the dump truck for a little while and then, you know, hand it back over, but it looks different in our hands. Our play looks different than their play. So it's fun for us to do. That's why we're, we're having fun. But also yeah. I, I thought of new marketing for us. Sugar Lime Blue, 100% human band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 